Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see how to do a pseudo 3D inversion in Recipe. For this you have to first select 2D because this is a pseudo 3D, you cannot do a 3D and then check pseudo 3D inversion from 2D lines. Bear in mind this is still in improvement and development stages so you might not be able to use all of the recipes features for now but you have enough to do your data cleaning error analysis and inversion with this option by default you have to import separate lines for this we are providing you a line space that can be changed in future based on your electrodes and you can choose from any of these file formats available for you. For this example, I'm going to use protocol DC, which is only resistivity, and select my 2D lines. These examples are all available in our repository. Please go and check them out. I'm selecting these two surface profiles. And since I have chosen one meter, you can see that recipe is showing two separate pseudo sections in a grid 3D format with one meter spacing. But this is not the format or the array that I have, so I have to update my electrodes. Very, very important that the label of the electrodes that you have should contain a line number with a space coming after that an electrode number. So you should have one space between line number and electrode number. Recipe automatically does that for you. So as you can see, line one and then line two, each of them have 24 electrodes. And all you have to do is basically populate X, Y, and Z. And if you have buried electrode, select them. For this, I'm using this example. So I'm selecting X, Y, and Z from my Excel file. copy them and simply paste them in here okay and if I go back to my pseudo section I can see I have two separate lines now with topography pretty far away from each other since these are pretty far away we are not going with 3d inversion and we want to just show them in a pseudo 3d grid just like the batch inversion in 2d you can go into the pre-processing, select your data set, and filter the data points that you seem unnecessary or erroneous. If you have reciprocal measurement or phase measurements, all these tabs will be activated for you. Next step is creating a mesh. Just like 2D, you have the options of quadrilateral mesh and triangular mesh. Additionally, you can select the fine coarse boundary depth of your mesh. I'm going with the default selections and create a triangular mesh. Depending on the number of lines this process can take a few moments. As you can see the mesh is presented to you just like the pseudo sections you've seen in a, three, in a pseudo 3D format. The next step is the inversion settings. This settings will be applied on all of your data sets similarly. So error amounts or anything that you choose from the add advanced tab will be applied similarly to all of your data sets. And then we can invert our data. Just like 2D, you will be seeing the pseudo section per iteration as well as RMS value versus iteration for each survey. But if you select the parallel inversion, this option will not be available. All right, as you can see, we have the inverted profile for these two surface lines in a pseudo 3D grid. You can select any of the attribute available like resistivity or conductivity, or if you like, you can compute the attribute you're looking for in here based on the value, uh, available attributes in here. Additionally, you can look at each surface line separately 
for more details in a 2D format. And bear in mind, because these two lines, because recipe actually keeps the aspect ratio each time you have to zoom out or zoom in on your plot to see a better representation of your data. Okay. And also, you can do post-processing. Based on the normalized error, if something has gone wrong, you can take it out of your inversion and reinvert all of your data. Now I'm going to show you how to do a pseudo 3D inversion with cross borehole including in the survey. As you know, cross boreholes are not surface arrays, so they have different inputs. For this, from the options menu, I'm going to restart my project and not the whole GUI. And then I'm going to import all of my data sets. And here we have two surface arrays and one cross borehole array. And I'm going to import them. Again, because we selected one meter spacing, these are shown in this view, which is incorrect. We have to update our electrodes. This time I'm going to directly import my electrode CSV file from the example folder, this one. And as you can see, automatically everything is populated. And since I included the buried flag in my file, this last column, which zero stands for not buried and one for buried electrodes, I can see that the flags have been chosen correctly. Very important when you including cross borehole in your data sets combined with the surface arrays, you must have one surface electrode for each borehole. The Z value in here is not important. All is important is this check mark in here. So you can have a negative Z value in here, but you have to make it as surface electrode. It's just for presentation purposes. So your electrode can be anywhere in the XYZ grid that you like it. Just keep the top one as surface. Again, I can go to the mesh tab and create my mesh. For this, I'm just going to skip it and just show how fast your inversion will go if I check parallel inversion and then invert my data. Because we don't have a mesh, Recipe automatically will create a mesh based on the default values and in triangular format and then invert your data sets. Bear in mind, in parallel inversion, you are not going to see the iterations and all you have to do is wait. Based on the available core of your CPU, as well as the power of your CPU, this can go very fast. My computer, unfortunately, is not that fast, so it takes a while. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> For this, I'm going to pause the video a bit and then come back when it's done. Okay, when your inversion is done, you can see everything in the pseudo 3D format, just like before. This time, you will have also the cross borehole inversion in your pseudo 3D plot. You can move it around, look at your data set separately, and also you can, just like before, select any of these options available for you. Bear in mind, sensitivity overlay as well as contouring and DOI estimates are not available in pseudo 3D display, but when you go to each line, you can select them and see different options, just like a normal 2D file. Oh, and very important thing, we have now an options menu in here. You can save your project and load it for later use, as well as selecting a light team or a dark team, just like what, what I'm using in here. Okay, thank you very much for watching this video.